Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to profit from traders who don't use stop losses. Now, this isn't a debate on whether you should use one or not. I'm just going to show you how I profit from those traders who don't use them or who remove them while they're in a trade. Now, you might be thinking out there, well, you know, who doesn't use a stop loss? Retail traders, you know, some of them do, some of them don't, right? But there is um, information out there. This is from, you know, a sponsored Reuters article. Um, and Reuters is a big news publication. And, you know, pretty much the publication is stating stop loss, uh, stop using stop loss orders. They don't work, right? And it goes into, um, you know, why um, stop loss, this, this uh, company, um, think that stop losses don't work. And again, I'm not here to say whether they do or they don't. They're strategies for, for everything, right? But the Forex market is a zero sum game, meaning for someone to win, someone else has to lose. So what I'm gonna show you is how to capitalize when these guys, yeah, guys out here and guys who teach you, you know, that you, you know, strategies, um, to trade without stop losses, the no stop loss forex strategy, and you, there's there's tons of this stuff, you know, online. But I'm going to show you exactly how I profit from those traders who use who or who don't use stop losses, right? And this is not just a retail trading problem, as far as you know, someone sitting behind the computer at home. Yeah, this is an industry wide um, uh, uh, thing. Yeah, so this guy. His name is Kwaku um, Adoboli, right? You may know him, UBS trader who lost a hell of a lot of money, maybe a couple billion, right? And I want you to listen to this quickly, right? Before we get into the technicals, I'm going to show you, right? Because it, he, he pretty much breaks down exactly uh, uh, the, the kind of person that I'm trading against, the kind of strategy that I'm trading against. And this is a big bank. This is UBS, right? And this is how they trade. Yeah, so you press play. Basically, Peku, you're wrong. So I go, well, if the CEO of the bank says I'm wrong, I must be wrong. And I flip my positions, go along with the house view. On the day that we do that, July the 1st, the market starts to crash and we just panic, lose control. And as the market crashes up to 40% in some of the markets we were trading, we just bought more and more and more. As it's going down. As it's going down. You're buying the stuff. Yeah, because because the idea is that, well, just hold or buy more, because when it bounces, then you make the money back. How do you hold those positions? Well, using the umbrella. You know. Right, so I'm gonna come back to that again, yeah, at the end, um, probably of the video, or maybe not, it depends on whether you get the point or not. But, um, so let's basically go into how I would take advantage of that um, strategy. Now, what you have to understand is that there are typical strategies that traders will trade. One of them is a breakout strategy. Now this represents a nice level, right? That breakout traders would be looking at, yeah? So you've got a level, a clear defined level where you've got a nice wick rejection there. It's very, very accurate, this level. Yeah, you can even see it from there very very accurate yeah and remember we haven't got we don't know what's coming to the to the left or to the right of the chart so the obvious thing is one of two things either traders are getting in here on that engulfing candle right or if basically prices break to the upside because if we've been in pretty much like a ranging market yeah for a while yeah, if you look at that maybe that's a ranging market right there maybe to the left maybe not but this level here is definitely a clear and defined level, yeah? So, breakout traders, what do they do? They trade breakouts of levels. So, what do we see happen here? We get a nice, strong, bullish candle, yeah? Breakout traders are jumping in, yeah? Just in the same way that Kwaku, yeah, has a view on the market and price action is confirming that view yeah so this is pretty much what we're seeing they're going to place their trades and once they place their trades yeah they're committing capital into the market yeah so you have to wait for you know a breakout trader for example is one of the strategies to commit capital 
via obvious price action. Yeah, And if this goes to the heavens, then good for them. What I'm doing is I um, am waiting for when obvious price action, when obvious trading setups fail those traders. Yeah, I'm not concerned with trading your typical breakout trade you know trade um uh, strategy that's not how you know we trade we trade when there is an edge and a psychological edge and a zero sum game so i'm trying to take advantage of traders who don't use stop losses yeah um so how do i do that now i'm waiting and i'm sitting on my hands and they've committed capital placed their stop losses below the swing of various areas then what i'm going to do is i'm waiting for that price action that draws traders in to fail. Because remember, these guys don't use stop losses. And some of the guys that are disciplined or not disciplined enough to uh, to, to hold their stop loss, yeah? Because there's something called loss aversion. And loss aversion pretty much means uh, pain feels worse than gains feel good. It's a psychological bias. So if pains feel worse than gains feel good, the consequence of that in the Forex market is that traders will start to move their stop loss because they don't want to accept the loss. And there are traders that will not use stop losses. And as it goes down and goes against them, instead of risking 1% or 2% or 5% on that trade, they find themselves on the wrong side of the market. Yeah, and like Kwaku said, you know, on the day that he flipped his position, right, the market went against them. Yeah, but with the banks, what they can do is that they can add into positions because the theory is, like he said, is that he's hoping for the market to bounce back. So, what they're going to do is they're going to buy more as the market is going down, and if the market ever comes back. To here yeah or as the market goes back and they've bought down here then what they're doing is they're taking profit on the way up yeah so to cover the loss for this the banks have deep pockets have very deep pockets so they can do that the average retail trader though does not yeah in fact they'll end up you know blowing their accounts and this is exactly how traders blow their accounts if they don't have enough um you know to cover uh, the margins now this is quite an extreme position but I'm going to show you the actual setup and this is exactly how it worked so the market is going against these traders yeah mark just imagine that they didn't have a stop loss and it's going against these traders now they've committed capital and what does this represent this represents pain for a lot of traders who went long here if you're in a trade and you're buying as well and you're compounding your martingaling in etc Right, this represents a lot of pain because you're looking at your unrealized profit, yeah, and you're seeing negative, yeah. In fact, you're probably adding to your account if you had, you know, the average is what maybe ten thousand pounds. You might have to top up another ten thousand pounds, twenty thousand pounds, thirty thousand pounds just to cover, you know, the margins when prices go against you, yeah. This is represents pain for a lot of traders now when traders are in pain what is the one thing that you want in life when you're in pain relief yeah you want pain relief when you have any kind of uh uh pain from a cold to you know uh, uh aches back pain whatever it is yeah you want you go out and buy what pain relief yeah pain relief in this scenario would be if you're if you're here if you're down here and you're in a lot of pain in your account and you're seeing you're on the edge of blowing your account what do you what would be pain relief for you if price ever came back up to here because what that would represent is you're able to get out for your original loss yeah whatever you factored in here whether that was one percent two percent half a percent etc right you're now here nearly blowing your account if prices can come back up here traders are going to get out for at least a small loss their original loss small loss or at least a break-even trade yeah it's just the way things work it's the most logical thing to do so you've bought here traders who don't trade stop losses um 
bought here. They've gone through the pain phase. Yeah, it's lasted maybe a couple weeks, couple months, etc. Yeah, and some pain as well can last even a few days for um, for traders overall. Yeah, but as we go forward, as we go forward. Eventually, there's some pain relief coming. There's some pain relief coming. And what happens is, is price comes back up to the area. This is a supply zone. Let me just draw that there. Yeah, comes back up to the area where these guys are in pain. The banks are probably in a bit of pain, etc. And what they're doing is they're averaging in. And when they're making money on the way up, then they can exit their trade when prices come back up here or if prices come back home here unfortunately for Kwaku price never came back yeah for them the market crashed on them and never came back right but in this scenario after waiting a few months uh, quite a few months and now beginning of the year they are able to make the money back more so by adding in and buying down here but they're able to be relieved the pain relief here is definitely true and pain relief represents itself in the form of exiting the trade so if they bought here if you buy yeah you have to sell to exit it's the opposite transaction they bought here and they have to sell to exit so selling orders are supply someone like me who understood that there was a lot of pain going on here traders being captured because obvious price action failed them then they're going through the pain phase so this is the capture phase oh this is the capture phase this is the c this is the pain phase the p and this is the relief phase r relief in this area and if they bought then they have to sell to exit what else is going on within this area as well yeah to add to the supply and demand equation new traders who are looking at levels of resistance 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 are also doing what entering new positions to what the short side right so if they're entering short that is supply we got traders like the banks who would have been buying down here, making money on the way up, right? Make these guys are making money on the way up. Where are they going to be taking profit? Here. And if they buy down here, buy, 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 all these buys, where are they? Where are they? What is their take profit order? A sell order. Supply, supply, supply. So net net, we should see what more supply than demand in this area. And what happens? Prices fall. We can clear the chart a little bit. Yeah, let's clear all this up and understand that. This is how you need to look at the market. It's not just good enough to say, all right, this is a supply zone, you know, that we're gonna get short. You have to understand the psychology behind um, why, what makes this a potential or a potentially strong supply zone. It's not because there's a, there's a technical pattern. There's a lot of things going on behind the scenes, yeah, that you need to be aware of, yeah, and again, Going back to Kwaku, yeah, and we'll just play this one more time, yeah, and he really breaks down this whole scenario. Basically, Kwaku, you're wrong. So I go, well, if the CEO of the bank says I'm wrong, I must be wrong. And I flip my positions, yeah. go along with the house view. Long here. On the day that we do that, July the 1st, the market starts to crash. Crash. And we just panic, lose control. And as the market crashes up to 40% in some of the markets we were trading, we just bought more and more and more. Mm -hmm. As it's going down. As it's going down. You're buying the stuff. Yeah, because the idea is that, well, just hold or buy more because when it bounces, then 
you make the money back. There How you do you hold those positions? Well, yeah, when it bounces, you'll make the money back. So they're making the money back and their original position, they've already made their money. There's no need to hold on to that position because they made all their money plus more and they exit here and then this is what happened to supply and demand equation. So that's pretty much how at Trading 180, we take advantage of traders who do not use or remove their stop losses and get themselves into trouble. Is there a case for using stop losses or not using stop losses? Of course. I'm not saying whether you should or you shouldn't. But what I am saying is that for those traders that don't use stop losses or haven't used stop losses and are watching this video, this is exactly how I'm profiting from you. And if you want to find out a bit more about the, you know the many many setups and this isn't this isn't just this isn't just applicable to daily charts as far as one day charts this you can use this strategy on um every single time frame every single time frame because traders are traders are caught in their positions on every single time frame whether it's a five minute 10 minute 20 minute etc yeah this happens all the time every day so with that being said if you want to find out more go to trading180.com and uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please uh, let me know and uh, I will get back to you as soon as possible. Uh, guys, have a great trading week and take care.